Humphrey. You can call me Ian, you can call me Mr. Humphrey, it doesn't matter. But, you know, when I walk out that door later on this evening, if you don't remember my name, that's okay. But what I want you to remember is the message. For tonight, the three things that I want to talk about briefly are, like Brian said, I want to talk about overcoming adversity. I want to talk about peer pressure. And I want to talk about never giving up. Because those are three things that everyone in this room at some point in our lives, we're gonna face. At some point for you young men and young ladies, peer pressure is gonna knock on your door. And you're gonna to have to have the courage to lock it or not open it. At some point, you're gonna stand in front of adversity and you're gonna need the courage to go over it, around it, underneath it, or through it if you need to. At some point, you're going to feel like giving up. You might face something in your lives and you're holding on as tight as you can. And you might think about giving up. You guys ever swing on those monkey bars? Anybody? I have a five-year-old son and I take him to the park and he jumps up there and he grabs onto those rings. And he holds on until his arms begin to shake. One hand will let go and he'll still keep holding on. And finally, he'll let go. After about a week, he'll start to get those calluses on his hands. You guys ever get those? Okay. I used to get those when I was a kid. My son has those calluses on his hands. And what that helps him do is what? Hold on a little bit longer. So what I hope to do tonight is give you guys a couple of calluses. So that when you face those obstacles, you're able to hold on and not let go. Now, did any of you guys, when you got your first jersey, did you try it on? You did try it on? Did you hear the pole? Did you flex? I'm the only one that did that. Like Rodney, you didn't do that? You did, okay, for you yourself. I'm not by myself. Okay. Now, I stuck my arms out just like the coach said. The kid went that way, I went that way. Where you go? He went back that way, I went that way too. I cut him off. We go. If you're going to the water fountain, I'll follow you. You can't get in the water. Right? I got you. Okay. Okay, I was on that dude like a pair of those skinny jeans. You guys see those skinny jeans? Okay, I was on it. But there was one problem. What do you guys think that problem was with my defense? I was real awful. <laughs> and I was that kid playing defense while we were on offense. <laughs> I can laugh about it now, but there were parents screaming, hey, we on offense! My teammates were screaming, we on offense! The little kid that I had the skinny jeans defense on, he's like, y'all on offense, you on offense <laughs> I admire you guys for playing basketball and football. Because it's hard to come to practice day after day after day. Sometimes it's hard work, especially when you have schoolwork and homework that you do. It's hard to continue to shoot the ball when sometimes you miss. And now I know that basketball and other sports are a lot like life. You have to keep shooting. Sometimes you might miss, but if you keep shooting the ball, eventually what? You're going to make it. You play soccer, you got to keep kicking them. And if you guys play baseball, sometimes you strike out, right? But you got to keep swinging. And the same is true in life. Sometimes we face obstacles, but we have to keep swinging. We have to keep kicking. That we make. That night I, I was arrested. And months later, I went to court and the judge said to me, 15 years ago. Now my first thought was one I deserved. My 
second thought was, my life is over. Even though I was only 19 years old, I thought, my life is over. I'm never getting out of prison. When this prison door closed behind me, my first night, I could hear voices of people that knew me as a kid, voices that used to tell me that I was stupid. Voices of people that used to tell me, you're never going to amount to much and you're going to be just like your father. My father was a career criminal. He spent his whole life, my whole life in prison, and that's where he died. Those are the voices that I heard. I thought to myself, I deserve to be here. I collapsed to the ground. I probably for the second time in my life that I can remember. I can't tell you guys how that made me feel. I can only express to you that the abuse that I faced in that foster home wasn't anything compared to the pain that I felt of burying my mom. You guys face peer pressure. If you guys don't remember my name, if you remember my story, if you remember the adversity that I was able to overcome, when you face certain challenges in your life, you feel like giving up. You can ask yourself. That man that spoke to us was able to make it.